Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for coming uh, to worship with us today. Those of you that normally come at 10, you got to sleep in a little bit. I can tell that's exciting to you. Those of you that normally come at 1130 are still sleeping now, probably. So uh, we're so glad that you're here today. This is a, just a great day as we're going to celebrate uh, with a whole bunch of people who have chosen today as a day to put a marker on spiritual history in their life. It's a great day. It's a, it's a day for baptism. Uh, what the Bible gives us as uh, a point in time where we get to close the door on our past and open the door to our future. Come on, anybody want to close the door to some of your past and have an opportunity to open the door to your future? So thank you for whatever reason you're here to, to be baptized or to watch somebody be baptized or just to, you just kind of entered in today and you don't even know how you ended up here, but you're here. Uh, this could be a very special day for you. Uh, we, we've decided to call this day, I Have Decided, because it really, at some point for all of us, comes down to the power of a decision. When our decision meets up with the promise of God, something supernatural can happen in our life. The promise of God is out there for us at all times, but there has to be a decision to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter into that. I'm going to embrace that. I'm going to make that a part of my life. And I hope you know that one of your greatest God-given abilities in life is your power to choose, your power to decide what you're going to do with your life. Uh, you know, when this meeting is over today, there'll probably be a bunch of us that will have this conversation in their car because I know this conversation will happen in my car. Where do you want to go for lunch today? <laughs> and now here's how the conversation will happen in my car. I'll say, so where do you guys want to go to lunch? And they'll go, you decide. They'll go, it's up to you. And then... Then, at just like clockwork, I will go, let's go eat Mexican. No. <laughs> let's go eat Indian. No. <laughs> let's go eat Italian. No. And then it becomes like, how could you even think to suggest those places? Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? The struggle is real. And, and eventually, we will, after me finally suggesting about 10 or 12 places, pulling out my uh, Urban Spoon app and trying to figure out what we have, we end up at the same place all the time anyway. But I mean, you know, that, uh, that, that conversation goes on, and finally, you just have to decide. Uh, there's something powerful about deciding. There's something amazing that happens when you choose to choose. The Bible talks about uh, the ability to choose and what a difference it can make in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 30 uh, gives a couple verses that I really like a lot. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments so that you may live and multiply and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you're entering to possess it. But, verse 17 says, if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but you're drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. And I like this verse. They are told this, and I think we are told this today. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. 
In case you need some help to make a decision, choose life. Everybody say, choose life. Choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. I think this is an incredible concept to understand because the Bible lays out in front of us this idea. You get to choose the kind of life you want to live. It's set before us. You can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose prosperity or you could choose adversity. You could choose blessing or you could choose curse. That's what's set before us. The power to choose is in your hand. You may not have control over every circumstance around you. You may not have your control over everything that's going on in, in the world today, but you do have the power to make a choice yourself. It's one of the greatest powers that you have. You can choose how you want to live. And then at the end of uh, Joshua's life, as he was addressing all of Israel in uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, he, they, are, they are reaching kind of a national crisis, uh, maybe not unlike America right now. And he says, if it's disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. But as for me and my house, we are going to choose to serve the Lord. Decisions are powerful, uh, but they are not always easy. Anybody in this room struggle with decisions? Come on, just be honest. In church, you struggle with decisions. Raise your hand. Some of you are trying to decide right now if you want to raise your hand. <laughs> Let me just encourage you to go ahead. Don't lie in church. Uh, this. Uh, some people have an easier time of deciding than other people. Some people just really struggle with decisions and making decisions. But you know what's interesting about uh, the word decide is it literally means to cut off choices. To, to decide is, is in some ways to say no to this, this, and this so that I can say yes to this. And I think sometimes a lot of people struggle with deciding because they want to try to keep all their options open. They, 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 don't want, they don't want to narrow the path for themselves at all. They think, somehow, just in case, I want to keep a back door open. We'll just sort of see what happens. But I just want you to understand that there is tremendous power in you learning how to say no to something so that you can say yes to something greater. It's the power of a decision. It's the power to choose. October 17th, 1981 was a day I made a decision. It was a day that I stood in front of a bunch of people in a little bitty church in New Orleans and said to my amazing bride, I do, I will, I commit. And what I was doing is to say, to build our life together, I am saying no to intimacy with any other female ever for the rest of my life so that I could say yes and commit to this relationship. And I think some people forget that that's the decision they're making. And that's the power involved in, how, in building a life, building a marriage, building a family building a future is that ability to say, I'm closing all the back doors. I've closed the door to divorce. I've closed the door to other women. I've closed the door to anyone else. And I'm saying yes to this one. It's the power to decide. It's a powerful decision. On September 1st, 1989, Suzette and I in a little U-Haul with all the possessions that we owned, drove into Asheville, North Carolina. Her sobbing, crying right next to me going, I know this is the right decision, but it's a hard one. We left friends. We left other opportunities. We left other things that were in front of us because we were making 
a decision that we were going to cut off all the other options that could possibly be there and move here to start this church 25 years ago. I'm glad we did it. I think, I think the struggle that people have with decisions sometimes is, is they don't really know what the outcome is going to be like. If they could be guaranteed an outcome that would feel good or seem right, they would go, okay, let me see the outcome and then I'll decide. But can I just tell you that all, what a decision does for you is it starts to point you in a particular direction. And nobody really knows whatever outcomes are going to come out of anything that happens in their life. But a decision can change the direction of your life. The Bible says about King Asa, as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. It wasn't about King Asa's perfection. It was about King Asa's direction. And he'd set himself in a direction to say, I'm not perfect. I don't have everything together. I don't know that I'm the best king that's ever lived, but here's the direction my life is going to go. I am going to seek the Lord. I'm going to go after God. I'm going to try to make the best choices I possibly can to go for God. And that direction brought the blessing of God on his life. I, I, I like Jim Rohn's statement on this. He says, you cannot change the destination of your life overnight but you can change the direction of your life overnight. A decision, a decision can change your life. A decision, uh, a decision to start taking better care of yourself in terms of eating or exercise could change everything about your health. A decision to say, I'm not going to spend all the money that comes into my life, but I'm going to set a little bit aside on a regular basis, could change everything about your financial future. A decision, like the one I just said to, uh, earlier, about you're committing to somebody for the rest of your life, or you're committing to be loyal in a friendship, could change the direction of all the relationships in your life. How many of you know a decision can affect your career? How many of you know a de decision can affect your spiritual life. And I think there's a lot of us today that it is, it's, it's a day to decide. All the people that have registered today for uh, water baptism are saying, I'm making a decision. Today, I'm going public. I'm committed to Christ. I know I'm not going to be perfect. I know I'm not going to have it all together. I don't even know what the, what the outcome of that is all going to be, except I know this, I'm changing the direction of my life, fully committing to Christ. I think we ought to give them a great big hand. Can we do it? <laughs> and it might be possible that some of you guys that are here today, you might, go, you might make that decision spontaneously. You may, some of, some of us are spontaneous. Who are the spontaneous ones in, in, the, in the room right here? Who, who, are, who, are, the, who are the non spontaneous planners? Come on. That, those, that's, my, that's my tribe right there. I don't mind being spontaneous as long as I've had a chance to plan for it. Uh, I'm never going to get on the road and go, let's just figure out where we're going to stay in a hotel. No, no, no. We are going to have a place to stay, for sure, because I'm not ending up at some KOA campground somewhere. <laughs> it is not going to happen. But I, I, I want to I share a Bible story with you about a guy who made a spontaneous decision to follow Jesus in baptism, and it turned his life around, and it may speak to where you are today. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26 says, later God's angel spoke to Philip. He says, at noon today, I want you to walk over to that desolate road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. And he got up and he went. And he met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down that road. The eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, was returning to Ethiopia, where he was minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. Let me just say to you, God knows how to send the right people 
across your path. And here is this, here is this Ethiopian eunuch who we'll find in a moment is, is a seeker trying to figure out where to go with his life. Even though he's got a great position in life, he's a, he's a minister of finance, he's, he's got a high up kind of position, but he's trying to figure out what to do. And he's on a lonely, dusty road, and God says, I'm about ready to intersect your life with somebody who's going to speak into your world. That may be what happens to some of us today. That God is going to enter into your space right now and you're, also, you're going to have a divine encounter with a God who really loves you. So he was riding, verse 28, in a chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. So the spirit told Philip, climb into the chariot. Now that would be pretty bizarre, wouldn't it? You're just riding along, reading in your chariot, as you do. Uh, and uh, this is before the, before the idea of coming, like, don't text and drive, you know, don't read and drive. And uh, so running up alongside of him, Philip heard the eunuch reading Isaiah and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he answered and he said, how can I without some help? So he invited Philip into the chariot with him. And the passage that the eunuch was reading was this. As a sheep led to slaughter and quiet as a lamb being sheared, he was silent, saying nothing. He was mocked and put down, never got a fair trial. But who can now count his kin or his descendants since he's been taken from the earth? And this is obviously Isaiah talking and prophesying about Jesus but the eunuch doesn't know. He says, tell me, who is this prophet talking about, himself or some other? So Philip grabbed his chance. Using this passage as his text, he preached Jesus to him. As they continued down the road, they came to a stream of water. The eunuch said, well, here's water. Why can't I be baptized? Like right now. He ordered the chariot to stop. They both went down to the water, and Philip baptized him on the spot. Wow, what a great story. One of, the, one of the other translations, New American Standard, the eunuch says, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? That Ethiopian eunuch made a decision. What a great decision. A great decision to seize a divine opportunity. I think there are some of us in this room today that we are now have an opportunity. Look, there's water. Look, there's opportunity. Look, there's your future. Step into it. Come on, look, there is a legit powerful way to close the door on your past. Why not close the door? Today could be a brand new beginning for your life. Today could be the start of an amazing new chapter for you. It could be that you would decide finally to give your life to Christ today. To say, I'm, I'm tired of just kind of searching around for it. I'm ready. I don't even know what it's all going to mean. I don't know what the outcome of it's all going to be. But all I know is the direction I've been going has not been taking me where I want to go. And the direction, I'm going to change direction. I'm going to turn from one way of living and I'm going to follow after Jesus with all of my heart. Some of us, today would be a great day. This is, a, this, is, this is more powerful, I hope we understand, than just the idea of we're going to do a, uh, you know, get down in the water and come out and some sort of symbol thing. This is a spiritually powerful event that happens in our, in our lives. You could decide to get baptized today. You could be just like this story of the Ethiopian eunuch is recorded forever in the history of forever, there could be recorded, you decided today 
to turn the corner and go, you know what? I know it's spontaneous. I know this is crazy, but I'm just going to go for it. Isn't it amazing that with a choice, when a decision meets the promise of God, that you can literally change the trajectory of your life today. You could change the direction of your life today. And what I love about this story is it highlights something that I think we have to understand. Because the decision to follow after Jesus, there was nothing in this about try to improve yourself. What this story was, Jesus was led to the slaughter, if you will, to pay the price for all I've done wrong, for all you've done wrong. A, a, new, a new day and a new chapter in life doesn't start with a, some kind of New Year's resolution to say, I'm going to start trying to do better. A new day and a new chapter in our life starts with forgiveness. I am not holding this against you anymore. I am forgiving you. I am wiping the slate clean. You know, every year, I don't know if you do this, but I do it. Almost every year, I start off with a New Year's resolution to do better. Any New Year's resolutionists in here? Come on, anybody, right? Some of you say, yeah, I used to do that, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I know it doesn't work, and I still do it at any other, any time anyway. But I, I realize that it's not the power to choose to try to make myself better that God is pleased with. Um, it's not about trying to do better. The gospel is this, and this is the scandal of the gospel. The gospel is this. God says, I love you. I paid the price. I've forgiven you. Now let's wash the past away. And let's change direction and go for the future. Come on. It's not about do better. It's about turning and heading in a new direction. It's about being released from your past through forgiveness. It's about being released to your future through forgiveness. Things will start to change because you've decided on a new direction. I don't normally remember a lot of dates, but as I was trying to get ready for this message, I was thinking about the dates that have been decision days that have been pivotal for my life. And one date I do remember so well is May 29th, 1974. That was a long time ago. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm starting to get old. It's like when I, when, when I go, like when I have to log in for something or, you know, register for something, and they have those little scroll things for your date, it's like, I'm like, dang, I, I, my date is way down there. It's way too far down. I don't, I'm, <laughs> at least I'm still alive, so yeah, but my date is way down. May 29th, 1974, I, just, I, I, I made a decision. I said, uh, I'm going to start to follow Jesus. Uh, I didn't even know what that meant. I wasn't raised in church. I had no idea what that even meant. I just knew I, I wanted God in my life. I needed God in my life. I wasn't even aware of what that meant. And I started going to a little bitty church, and, uh, and they loved on me and just embraced me, accepted me just like I was, just like this church does uh, for so many people. But I remember just a few months later, it was, I think it was like October, and I remember we were having a service, and it was kind of the end of the meeting, and some of us were standing up front, and the pastor was praying, and he just, he just said something really kind of almost off the cuff. He said, I just believe there's some people here that they've made Jesus the Savior of their life, but they've not really committed to make him the Lord of their life. They've accepted his forgiveness, but they've not said, Jesus, okay, I know I'm forgiven, but now 
I'm, I'm making a full commit. I'm all in on this thing. And it's just my moment right there. It, was, it wasn't a long thing, but in my moment, I had this realization, I, if this is ever going to work for me, I cannot play around with this anymore. I got to go all in. And I'm going to say that decision affected the trajectory of my life forever. It was a historic day for me personally, and it was a long time ago. But I can still remember the exact feeling. I can remember the, the atmosphere. I can remember the little church. I can remember everything about it. It was a day I decided I was going to fully commit to Jesus. I think some of us can make that decision today. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you know, what you don't know. And I don't even know that any of that's important. But I just believe the Holy Spirit is here today speaking to some of us to say, come on, this is your day to decide. This is your day to choose. Your life can be different. I want you to take a moment. Would you just bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment? And I would like to pray together today. Father, I thank you for every person in this room. I thank you for the amazing plan that you have for each one of us. And I'm just praying that you will touch our hearts and open us up to the, the beauty of your forgiveness and the beauty of your lordship. With your head bowed, your eyes closed. If you're here today and you just say, you know what, I, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I, I've never done that before, but I know I need God in my life. Or maybe you're here today and you say, I used to walk with God and be close to God, but I'm just not, I'm not there right now and I need to come back. I want to pray with you. Or if you just feel like, man, I'm unsure about where I stand. I want to make sure I'm right with God today. If that is you and you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you just lift your hand real high all over this room? Come on, all over the room, thank you. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to come back to him. I want to fully commit. I want to make sure I'm right. Come on, just right where you are, all over the room. Thank you so much. Hands are up all over the room. Come on, right where you are. We're not asking you to be perfect because there's not a perfect person in this room. We're asking you to choose a direction to go and pursue and seek after God. Would you do it? Would you change direction? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, anybody else just want to be a part of this? God bless you, young man. Thank you so much. Anybody else? I want us all to pray this prayer together. Everybody say with me, Lord Jesus. Let's all say it. Lord Jesus, I open my life to your love, to your lordship. I need you. I want you in my world. I know I've sinned, and I'm sorry. I come to the cross where you've paid the price for my forgiveness. Today is a fresh start, a new beginning, as I receive Jesus as my Lord. Help me become the person you created me to be. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Amen. Beautiful.